wanted to like hop on here and it's so funny. I remember, you know, making a video, you know, the first day when I first got the car and saying how like, you know, kind of odd and difficult and kind of like strange it was to, you know, obviously be driving on the right hand side of the car on the left hand side of the road. I just realized like, I think I'm like, I mean, so it's been about two and a half weeks. I feel like fully amalgamated. I just had this like realization that kind of be like, wait, when I go back to North America, I'm gonna have to drive on the left hand side of the car. Like what? Hey everyone, Joel Hans here. Guys, joined by a very, very, very special guest. It's been a long time coming, long time making, but popular request, Mia, Miss Leah Shutkeever. I don't think I need to really give much of an introduction, but if I do, she is a British competitive eater, known for eating things crazy fast, also really good with spicy challenges. And at that, today we're going to do a challenge together, guys. So we are in Port Talbot. Port Talbot. Port, Port Talbot. <laughs> Or Bert? No, but. But. Port Talbot. There you go. There's my. I'm making, yeah. making sure I got my pronunciations right. Port in, Talbot. Port Talbot in Wales, guys. Wales. Is Wales technically a different country than Britain? Yeah, so we're all part of the United Kingdom. Yeah, okay. Like Scotland, England, Wales. So technically, then, I'm going for a food challenge when in a new country. Have you done a challenge before here? I have. I did a small tour in Wales. Okay. Okay. So, a new country for me, not quite for her, but nonetheless, new challenge for both of us. Today, we're going after an undefeated burger challenge literally called the big one. So this features three massive burgers, each of them weigh, uh, or well, over 500 grams because there's 500 grams of beef on each one alone. Then there is a big, huge thing of uh, chips or French fries over a kilo, topped with 500 grams of fried chicken, then a whole bunch of sauces. Uh, there is 24 slices of cheese on all those burgers. They have like a spicy chili jam one, one with bacon, one with caramelized onions. Uh, I, there's a uh, halloumi, like cheese sticks, and I think that's pretty much about it. Now we're gonna have one hour to complete it. It is a 60 pound meal if we fail, otherwise free if we complete it. And we'll get 100 pound cash prize. So that was real quick. Long story short, big burger challenge, free t-shirts, cash prize of 100 pounds. Yeah, oh, and we get to rename the challenge, that's right. That's the big one. Okay. We wanna rename the challenge. Yeah, so currently, like again, they just call it the big one because it doesn't have a name. It's undefeated. No one's even beat half. Those who complete it, hopefully today, hopefully today. get a name in. So uh, that's about that. I think that's all the info. If I'm missing anything, I'll get it to you. And let's head on in. This has fun. Ready to eat some food? Ready. Let's go. All right, everyone, so here we are with the challenge. We have the 1.5 kilos of beef, which is over three pounds of beef. We then have a whole bunch of bacon on each one. There are 24 slices of cheese as well. So it's a lot, a lot, a lot of cheese. One has caramelized onions, one has a bacon jam, one has a chili jam. Then we have our kilogram of fries or 2.2 pounds of French fries, chips, I should say, um, with 500 grams of their crispy, fried chicken bits on top. Then we got to pick two sauces to go on them. Leah went with a barbecue and a ranch. I went with a hot sauce, maybe I'll regret it, and a barbecue. We have then six halloumi sticks. Am I forgetting anything, Leah? I don't think so. You've nailed that. Well, Weights hey, and everything. I'm amazed. Well, hey, there we go. So with that, let's get started here just momentarily. One hour on the clock. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's get into it. All right, guys, I have some ketchup here. You know I love my ketchup. Some very large burgers. And it should be fun. So I'm gonna try to like navigate this, not knock my drinks off the table. I'll probably grab this big old burger over here. Definitely a nice size little burger. Miss Leah, how is it? Mm. It's so good. Juicy. It's so good. Man, that damn good. Yeah. I've got a lot. Mm -hmm. This one's um, this is the pepper jelly on it. Mm. A little bit of sweetness. Mm. 
I don't really get my cheap but Is it supposed to be spicy? Mm -hmm. You said mostly, mostly sweet, those spicy. Mm -hmm. Very delicious, I love it. All right. It's probably good. Lots of cheese. How's this compare to other bird challenges in the UK? This is pretty good. There are some incredible burger vendors in the UK and I would say this is probably one of them. 100% mm. beef, smash patties, pretty brilliant stuff to be honest. I love smash burgers. Boy, and these are definitely juicy, that's for sure. We have this next one here. I'm not really sure. This one is with uh, lots of bacon and bacon jam. Give that a shot. Whoa! <laughs> All right. I need to be more like that. Bacon. What I accept about? flavors. <laughs> Talk about bacon. This is a very, very big burger. What's this one called? Baconator. The Baconator. <laughs> no trademark on Wendy's or anything. Very delicious though. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are here taking on the big one, yes the big one, with my good friend Miss Leah Shudkiever. So as we said, 60 minutes to complete this massive challenge. I mean, between the fries and the chicken, that was like three pounds. You had all that beef, the 24 slices of cheese or whatever on all of them. Like there was just an insane amount of food, insane amount of cheese in front of us. Um, yeah, that being said, it was very delicious on the first bites, and we were definitely excited to try to get into it. How does this compare to challenges in America and Canada? Great question. So I'd say this is pretty like similar to something you'd see in North America. The smash burger is very common out there. This is very tasty. Um, a lot of the burgers here I find are quite different in the UK, but these are very, like, what I call North American. Um, one thing I found in general, generally the challenges in the UK are actually quite a bit smaller than in uh, North America. Mm -hmm. Even if, like, some here is supposed to be, like, five pounds, it's usually actually five pounds. In the States, it's probably more like seven. So, take what you want. That's surprising. But shout out to these burgers. Ooh. So to this point, no one had even been able to complete half in the 60 minute time limit. So it was definitely a difficult one. In fact, this is one of the biggest challenges actually in Wales, the whole country of Wales. Um, and you know, being a smash burger challenge made it kind of rare. This is a really, really good burger. Like I'm not just saying, like I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to talk it up. This is definitely the best burger I've had in the UK. While smash burgers are definitely becoming a lot more popular globally, they are still uh, quite rare in certain regions. And but you know, the last year or two, they've definitely expanded worldwide, and I definitely see why. They are very, very delicious. Let me know if you like smash burgers down below. Um, the price of this meal was sixty pounds, which we were definitely hoping not to have to pay. I think this last one then should have been caramelized onions. I think lots of bacon or lots of bacon on this one too. Crispy onion. I some, oh, I got some spicy on this. I do have a thing of hot sauce here I'm gonna try to dig into if I can with one hand. It's so warm in here. A little hot? Do you want the door open? No. No, you know what? Not the noise. In addition, we were really hoping to actually win that 100 pound prize. Um, so yeah, definitely we were, uh, let's say the stakes were high, the stakes were high. Plus, you know, we could name the challenge. This was just called the big one. If we were able to complete it, we would be able to name it, which Leah was excited about. These fries are going to be a challenge to get through. There's a lot of No shortage. 
There's a lot of natural commentary in this video, so I believe that's pretty much the majority of the information. Again, going for that first food challenge win in the country of Wales. Super excited to have made it to the United Kingdom. Super excited to have uh, met up with Miss Leah here and got a challenge. Um, so yeah, ultimately let's tune on in, see what happens. Uh, let's just say there'll be no shortage of food in this one. It's a little bit of a, well, it's a lot of a nail biter. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. In addition, Wales is really known for castles and let's just say maybe we have some castle footage at the end so with that everybody at that let's tune on in let's see what happens and let's see if we can complete this undefeated huge big one burger challenge the burger is so rich a bit of hot sauce and acidity that spice kind of helps really break it up I think I need to eat some fries. <laughs> yeah, do it. Leave the burgers for last. Not a bad idea. There's a lot of fries. I don't know how they are. These burgers are fantastic, though. It's definitely a good way to finish. Maybe I'll even have to get some more burgers after. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Try some of this chicken. Not bad. Interesting barbecue sauce on it. Yeah, the flavor, the coating on the chicken is, is actually really tasty. Now, some of the options of sauces we have one was a blue cheese. The other was a ranch. Um, let me down below if you like blue cheese or ranch. Again, I went with none, but Leah, mm -hmm. team ranch over here. Just over 10 minutes in. Miss Leah, how you doing? I'm good. I feel this is definitely achievable. I would have liked to do it quicker, but. 100% is achievable. No one, no losers today. No losers today. Hashtag let's never We have to name this. That's true. For the next person that comes in and attempts it. Comment what we should name it down below. <laughs> Down the french fries. Most chicken down. Lee is well under her fries. She got her loomies down. I have those left still. Or chips, I should say. Let's get into these. Get a rock and roll. Okay, last stretch. I have like most of my last burger left. The reason that I did that is even though I don't strategize much, I seem to be thinking too much because Joel's next to me. So I think I'm gonna leave that strategically till the end. Get through most of these fries, maybe dig into some of that, back to fries, back to burger, and hopefully get this done in a somewhat impressive time, but we're already Ready. We're at 13 minutes, guys. We have a full hour. We're at 47 minutes. No one's even completed oh, half of this before. To be fair, maybe I'm just really hard on myself. I was like, up? 15 minutes, let's go. It's undefeated. <laughs> it's undefeated. If you want to speed up, I'll speed up. But it's undefeated if we can get that win. That's what we're after today. This guy, what guy? <laughs> we're all in this together. <laughs> Could you let uh, us crack the door, my friend? Want to crack the door? Thank you. Give you some air. <laughs> fried halloumi tastes just like fried halloumi. What did you expect? Cheesy. 
Leah's smart to save that last burger for last because burgers are easy to eat. And there's one tastes great. We are 15 and a half minutes in. Going real good. Leah is crushing this. She really only has like a handful of fries left. One burger. I'm pretty much the same spot. Just add to the burger. So we'll soon, hopefully, not jinx it, be the first two winners. Mm -hmm. Of the soon to be named challenge. I can't get over how much Joel has actually had to drink. I've probably done two of these, one and a half maybe, but that's crazy. He's been drinking fizzy drinks as well. I'd say I'm going pretty light on the liquid. Yeah. I normally drink a lot. It's too much. <laughs> Excuse me guys, would you ask for another Pepsi Max for me please? Please? Thanks so much. Leah reminded me I should stock myself back up. <laughs> That's what she intended to do. She was trying to help me out. Eighteen and a quarter in. We are just crushing that thing. I'm sure it's very pleasant to return back to that burger. Couldn't possibly say. Like we said, there's no failures today. Only winners. And I think I'm done right there. Thank you, Leo. Well done. I tried to shoot for 19 on the dot, roughly. That being said, we are now just going to cheer Leo on. She literally finishes, like, literally, she has like a handful of food left. So she's going to get it down here momentarily. I have full faith in her. She has a full 40 and a half minutes, guys. She's doing phenomenal. Like I said, no one has even done half of this before. And here you have Leah, almost done. Less than 20 minutes, guys. So let's, excuse me, tune in. She finishes up, crushes thing. Excuse me. <laughs> Compliments to the chef. Is it a law here in Wales that everything has to close at four on Sundays? No. It's just choice? No, yeah, we, we stay open. But like the grocery stores and stuff. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's still, it's still a lot, but I think people choose to, yeah, especially if it's a private business, you know? Okay. You don't see the big, you know, big, big shops at Tesco and stuff still. Really? Because mm -hmm. all, yeah, no, all, 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 all Aldi, Aldi, yeah, no, Asda, no. everything closed at four. Yeah, no, four o'clock. Yeah. It's, uh, it's law. There you go, guys. Four o'clock. It is law in Wales to close in on England Sundays. As well. yeah. What? In England as well. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm sure I'm doing Asda after. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Even gyms close earlier. Sunday's a rest day. That's why. Fair enough. Well, there ain't no rest for the wicked or the shuts today. <laughs> Hey, Martin, Martin, can I get a glass of just ice, please? Just ice, yes, yeah. please. Just ice? Yeah, let me fix you up. You're gonna fix me up? Yeah. Good cool. effort. I need fixing up. Okay, we have a tiny, tiny bit left. I'm gonna try and compose myself and finish gracefully here. Just a couple bites, Leah. Everybody, give her some oomph. 
Give her some encouragement down below. <laughs> yeah, Get come ahead. on, come Get, on. Let's see it, go Leah, go. <laughs> For those wondering what I just did, when you're feeling a little not great, if you can shock your system somehow, so just putting ice on your back, maybe in your armpit, it generally can make you feel a little better. Hopefully. Last, Last bite, let's uh, go, we are, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is savage. You're so close. You got this. It's been six weeks since I've done a challenge. That is a long time. It's a long time. I feel like a newbie. I feel like a rookie. Uh, who's crushing an undefeated burger challenge right now? And about to get 100 pounds. Mm. Pay for your gas. Mm. Pay for your gas. Mm. Look at that. Here we go. Yeah! Woo! There we go, everybody. Congratulations. That was awesome. Good job. This guy got me through this challenge. Absolutely. It's what I'm here for. I always say when I do a challenge with somebody, we're in it together, it's a team effort. Yeah, 100%. It's never me against you, you against me, it's us against the food, against the restaurant. Man versus food, that's what the show was. It wasn't man versus man, or man versus woman <laughs> yeah. in this case. So that everybody, I wanna give a huge thank you to Burger Boys, give a huge thank you to Miss Leah for coming out today. Glad we got you cross paths over here in the United Kingdom. 24, 25 for Miss Leah, killed it. Less than yeah. half the freaking time. It killed it, killed it. Though. It was, like, un it's undefeated for a reason. Yeah. That being said, guys, this was uh, honestly very, very delicious. I, best burger I had in the UK so far. Who knows, uh, who knew I would have had to come to Wales yeah. to get a castle-sized burger challenge. Wales is known for castles, if you didn't know that. Uh, but at that, guys, we both get the meal for free. We both get t-shirts. We will get to name the challenge. And we both each get 100 pounds, so that ain't too bad. Yeah, so, good. at that, Leah, any words? Um, my top button of my jeans I undid and now I'm concerned that I won't be able to do them back up. Uh, other than that, burgers were delicious and massive thank you again to the venue for having us here today. Thank you to Joel for having me on his channel because uh, it's just been an absolute pleasure to finally be able to do this and without you being here we couldn't have so thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Let us know down below if we should do another video together here in the future and uh, if it makes you feel any better, I. I, I did my belt. I did my belt today, so we were both <laughs> yeah. prepped. Uh, so that, everybody, of course, till next time, say happy healthy hungry, happy eating. What's your, uh, what, what do you say? What do I say? Yeah, do you have, do you have, a, do you have a slogan on the way out? I normally say to like. Yeah. Give the video a thumbs up yeah. before you leave. Comment yeah. down below. Yeah. Remember to subscribe to Joel's channel before you leave and check me out. My name is Leah Shakiva. Search me out. Of course, they probably already checked you out. Of course they're going to check her out. And on YouTube, I mean, not visuals. So like I said, everybody, <laughs> listen to her, liking, commenting. We always appreciate the subscriptions. Yeah. And with that, everybody, until next time. I'm going to try not to get any more ketchup on my shirt. It's why I usually wear black. Until next time, have a lovely day. Oh, is that your thing? Oh, oh cute. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. We're all good. Okay, we're not working. Alright, but I just drove through uh, what was Buckingham. Not Buckingham Palace, but Buckingham. Uh, in between. Milton Keynes and Bristol. That's kind of where we're headed. Guys, in 24 minutes, I literally counted, like I watched this on the map. In 24 minutes, guess how many traffic circles we hit? Quick, comment down below. Go, five, four, three, two, one. I'm assuming you picked a number. Guess how many, guys? 24 minutes, in 24 minutes, 
we went through 12, 12 traffic circles. That's nuts. So little, needless to say, I'm definitely getting the hang of them and uh, yeah, driving these narrow roads. So here we go, I'm gonna get back to driving. And we're not just on any bridge. We're on the Prince of Wales Bridge. This is, well, a very large bridge, but a well-known bridge because it connects Wales to, I guess, what you call Britain or England, like. And this is the city of Cardiff. This is what Cardiff looks like. This is the capital of Wales. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, they, one thing that's for sure, they have speed cameras everywhere. So you really gotta be, uh, like, pay attention to speed cameras. Gas is also extremely, extremely expensive. It's about the equivalence of, um, if you're talking Canadian, it's about $12 a gallon, uh, or about $3 a liter. If you're talking American, it's about uh, nine, almost, yeah, like just over $9 a gallon, uh, which is pretty insane. But yeah, guys, here you go. Little Cardiff, and we are on our way to see our castle. And I can say, well, I haven't yet, but I will be able to say I've seen a palace in London and a castle in Wales. Wales is known for the uh, castles, so this so should be fun. All right, everybody. Woo! Cardiff Castle, well, at least the outside of it. We are going to see a castle in Wales. All right, everybody, we made it to Cardiff Castle. So let's go see what this is all about. The little surrounding area looks pretty cool. looks pretty uh, dated. So we are entering in, guys. This is insane. I really do feel like it's like a movie. I, uh, it doesn't seem real. The fact that this is, you know, built as it is. The fact that this was, you know, a working, functioning, you know, standing operation is absolutely so fascinating. You know, any kind of item like this that I've been exposed to the rest of my life, you know, has been fabricated for, you know, movie sets or theme parks, but this is absolutely insane. All right, guys, first off, appreciate a big old tree. Let us, uh, this is so cool. This, this looks like, this looks like Game of Thrones. I mean, I'm just like, you know, throwing my castle, castle exposure with it. But here we go, guys. So basically, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that, I don't know if all this is considered the castle or like that's definitely one of the main buildings or maybe the main castle. And then obviously there's maybe this as well, which similarly is pretty dang cool. So let's see what all this looks like. And let's have some fun. The things you learn when you ask. So, this, so all of this, everything in this wall is actually considered the castle. This is the house, I guess. So, you know, you have like all the bedrooms and whatever, and you can buy tickets and do tours and stuff. I'm probably gonna do that while you're here, um, might as well. And then that building, that was actually the first building right there. They call that the keep, the gentleman said. So we're gonna go walk over there right now and check that one out. Cool, so what we saw so far was accessible for free, but I just purchased what they call a general admission ticket, and I also purchased a uh, tour of the house, the house tour. I asked, just kind of said to the guy, what do we need to do? That's what he said. Um, Toe came to, I think it was 1850, a, eight, yeah, 1850, like pounds. Um, so if you want to do a conversion, that's, uh, I don't know, let's say $25 or something like that. So this is the uh, first thing we got access to. This is called the Roman Wall. So apparently this is the kind of the oldest part of the castle. It goes quickly kind of through the history. So the Roman Empire uh, launched an invasion of Britain in 43 AD. Guys, this is so old and crazy to think about. Expecting a quick and glorious victory. Instead, they had a long bloody campaign um, to subdue the fierce local resistance and took 30 years to impose orders in Wales, 
The Roman uh, fort at Cardiff was an important part of the process, having close access to the sea, the river Taff, the road network. However, Wales was never completely conquered and the fort remained here until the Romans finally left in around 400 AD. Interesting. So, kind of what the old they used to have. So they had the construction, the forts were built. This is Wales, this whole portion of uh, the UK. It was abandoned, interesting, it was just barren. And then, uh, you know, Christianity spread through Wales, Welsh languages emerge, and this is all in Welsh. You see, uh, so that is, uh, I definitely cannot understand, but they have Welsh everywhere here. Uh, so yeah, Cardiff Castle Fort sprang to life, guys, after the Norman invasion in 1066. Crazy to think about that. Um, and then from there is where we actually have, you know, kind of some of the construction. Um, interesting. Uh, King Henry the first brother was actually imprisoned in Cardiff Castle. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about this history and I'll condense it for you guys. But yeah, this, I guess, is part of the Roman wall, and this is the oldest part of the castle. Okay, to summarize some of the history, so basically it was act, you know, again, started basically in the year 1000. We'll pick up from there. Just war and everything until the 1600s, to which it was just going to be destroyed after a civil war. Um, they decided to, like, Parliament decided to know, like, keep it, preserve it. They rebuilt it for 100 years. Um, and then in the 1800s, they uh, found the uh, Roman wall. That's actually where they found the Roman wall, which they rebuilt, even having to like uh, destroy some of the buildings in front. And then it really wasn't used until the Second World War, where they actually used it as an air raid shelter. So that's kind of, you know, super interesting. But, you know, the Roman walls, they're buried between or uh, beneath the uh, ladder banks, which is pretty interesting. Crazy. Crazy thing about that. It's a picture apparently from the 1800s. And then again, the outer bank of the second, or outer, the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, the castle became Cardiff's largest air raid shelter, capable of holding nearly 2,000 people. Interesting. Really, like, literally ramps going into the walls. And uh, there you go. About literally 2,000 years ago. Crazy to think about that, how old some of the history is in this part of the world. And the amazing thing is that, you know, again, the remains of this wall can be seen today. So that brings us to the Roman wall, chariot wall, they call it here. This is gorgeous. Wow, that is quite the, uh, quite the artistry, quite the artwork. And here we go, guys, 2000 years old. And we have a couple minutes before our tour. Um, they also, uh, we also got access with our purchase to the Welsh Soldiers Museum, which is down here. Um, so I'm not sure, uh, we'll see how much uh, this we get to see, but obviously dating, you know, here we have memorials of, um, you know, like the World Wars. Um, many, a, many, a, many, many a wars here. I mean, looks like some interactive thing. We have obviously depictions of digging trenches. It's a soldier's life. So it looks like we got uh, information about the battles, some uh, kind of memorabilia there. Interesting. I'm gonna have a peek around. Oh, cool, look at these. Man, those are, those are elaborate. Look, that is definitely like actual gold or, you know, plated at least something. Here we have like, a revolver and metals. And these are apparently from like the roughly 1800s. Crazy, it's talking about, you know, I guess the conquests and wars of Welsh and British rule. I'll kind of uh, see what it's all interesting here. All right, it's time for my tour. I'm gonna have to come back. Honestly, I mean, the best way uh, I'd put it so far is like, there's just so much history and you, you really realize how many like kind of conquests the you know British were involved in. I mean it was you know talking about them like basically trying to capture like I, I used the term capture or make advances in like India. You had 
uh, Canada, you had the United States, like the War of 1812, you had Afghanistan, you had China, uh, the, obviously the, uh, you know, the, the wars and the list goes on, so we're gonna have to come back, but we gotta go to our tour now. Now, the owners, the last owners, moved out in 1947, but most of it was done in the 19th century. The person was called John Patrick Crichton Stewart. He was the third Marquess of Peace. And he commissioned a man called William Burgess from London to start extending this part of the, the home here in South Wales. So this was a smoking room in the 19th century. Uh, the entire clock tower was built in 18, 18, 1874. And uh, well, it hasn't been smoked in since. So this is our next location. Alright, so just finished up the guided tour. It was pretty interesting. So we covered, um, you know, I mean, essentially uh, everything from just like a smoking room. Then we went to a nursery. Uh, a, I don't even know what you'd call it, like a sleeping room. Um, you know, some of the uh, big halls like this. Essentially, what the gist of it was is the gentleman just had so much money that he just wanted to put like build stuff. He's just like, I had so much money, I'm gonna gold plate the ceiling and then make the, you know this room and this fireplace dedicated to my favorite poet and stuff. So pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, I mean, it was, you know, actually what, three pounds, 350 pounds. So, I mean, it's worth it. Uh, now we get to explore the rest of the house. Uh, the part of the ticket we purchased, including this great big library, Pretty, pretty impressive. That is definitely something which you can say time and time again, the architecture is just like ridiculous and, and everything is just made big and big and big. So I guess the uh, family that owned this home until 1947, it was by far like one of the richest families, if not the richest family in the world at the time. Um, they made all their money off of coal. Uh, at the time, uh, like early 1900s or whatever, they were producing or like manufacturing 50% of the world's coal, which is insane. Coal in South Wales. Um, exploiting was the term that the gentleman used, but none the less. And also uh, the first 1,000 pound check was written by this family here in Wales in 1905. Billion? Yeah, million, yes. Oh, my apologies. One million. All right, here we have some armor 
and a cannon, which was recovered from the well within the castle's keep between five and 600 years old. Interesting. Definitely some old history here. Look at those weapons. Now this is a very, very, very pretty room, well-decorated room. This room is officially titled the Arab Room. But man, I gotta say, this is, this is very, very beautiful. I think this is one of my favorites. Lots of marble and gorgeous. And then there actually is an app, which I just got, and it uh, actually has audio informational pieces for places like the dining room where we were just were, so. Whilst it looks large, there are not as many rooms as you might think, and there was always a shortage of practical living space. Lord and Lady Butte and their children only used Cardiff Castle for a few weeks of each year. Crazy. Enjoying living in the quirky and imaginative rooms designed by the architect William Burgess, who was responsible for the castle's Victorian makeover. Burgess designed his medieval style interiors down to the last detail, including wall and ceiling decoration, furniture, textiles, and metalwork. Each individual room in the house has a theme, reflecting the interests of the architect and his patron, Lord Butte. William Burgess was a very expensive architect to employ and was famous for going over budget. But at Cardiff Castle, he was working for one of the world's richest men and cost was less important than the desired opulent effect. The upper rooms of the house include the small but very elaborate Arab room, which is rich with decoration in marble, mosaic, tiles, and a splendid ceiling covered with pure gold leaf. When Lord and Lady Butte stayed at the castle, they entertained in rooms such as the banqueting hall, the largest room in the house. And even today, the room continues to play host to royalty, and heads of state. Okay, so with the standard ticket besides that, is your, we're just back to this room, we're back to the library, and then the dining room, which is the green one. So let's head over now to the key and more of the grounds. And now that we have that app, we can learn some more about the history all about. Cardiff is an impressive example of a Norman Mott and Bailey castle. In fact, it's one of the largest in Wales. The steep-sided grassy mott, or mound, is over 12 meters high, and it's surrounded by a moat some six meters deep. The stone building on top is known as the keep. If you look at the image at the bottom left of the information panel, you can see the keep. Interesting, so that's a fake hill. This originally was wood, but in the year, like basically 11, like in the 1111, the like 1100s, 1100s, I guess that makes sense. They uh, built the stone one, and that's a moat. Kind of crazy to think about. Did you mention the fact there was no roof? All right, so here we are, entering the keep. So pretty astounding that this has been here again upwards of 900 to a thousand years and what's really interesting is this thing never had a roof it was built solely to keep things out and then there used to be buildings in front of the keep but those are since gone Then this is the Black Tower built in the 1300s, which has been used as a prison. And at one point, I actually connect it to the keep by a wall or like kind of a, well, they called it a wall. I, I'm assuming it's some sort of like a walkway, but maybe it was a barrier wall all the way to there. And here we have the wartime tunnels and we have an audio, so I'm just gonna- These tunnels were first opened up in the 1880s as galleries to allow the newly discovered Roman walls to be seen but they found a completely new and unexpected use in 1939 when the second world war broke out oh, so that's why knowing that Brit all right i hear they have some uh, audio in here so let's go see what this is all about and 
Interesting. Definitely big tunnels. There you go, guys. The wartime shelter, air raid shelter. Scary. So not going to lie, this is, it's almost a little eerie, and there you go, there's the sirens. This, this is, it's kind of a shocking experience, like, you feel it, you really feel it. Yeah, so basically we just came out, like, kind of up out of the tunnels on the top of the wall, if that makes sense. So we were kind of like at that level, now we're up here. Um, that, guys, man, you feel it, you feel it in there, you can just... You know, especially with the audio, but even without the audio, there's just this odd feeling in there. You know, you can tell like this was used for times of, you know, very, with, you know, real true seriousness and severity. Here's the back of the, uh, the keep there. And it's, I mean, it's crazy that like all this, you know, stonework and everything, it's all gorgeous, very beautiful. And we can actually continue this walk Kind of, you know, along the uh, the wall here, I guess you could say. I'm not sure where this takes us. I'm assuming we can get out, but pretty cool. Pretty dang cool. All right, so we're gonna head out of Cardiff Castle. I did not go back into the uh, little war area. Um, I, get, I did get a view a little bit more than you guys saw just to really capture the history. It takes more time. I have about maybe 20-ish minutes before I gotta head out. So I'm gonna kind of walk around the streets of Cardiff a little bit. Or he had some other pronunciation. Cardiff, I forget how he said it. Anyway, but the buildings look really cool. They definitely look a little dated. And uh, so yeah, let's go walk, take a little of a sight around and we'll see what it's all about. I got a recommendation from our man, Aaron. Thanks for saying hello. And he told me to come check out this place. This is called Cardiff Market which is a big kind of, uh, I don't know, they got like all kinds of stands of clothing and jewelry, foods galore, bakeries, yeah, all kinds, yeah, jewelers and stuff. And apparently this used to be a prison, so kind of a unique piece of history that they've turned what used to be a prison in a very downtown location into now, you know, quite an extensive market, which, you know, kind of reminds you of mini like Reading Terminal or whatever that is, so good stuff.